All right, so a new Star Trek show dropped, a new animated Star Trek show, and one that doesn't use some of the most traumatic moments in the lives of past Star Trek characters for joke fodder. So, you know, already I have high hopes for this one compared to some other recent endeavors. And that's a jab at Star Trek Lower Decks, which I hate. In fact, there's a lot of recent Star Trek that I'm not super fond of. Star Trek Picard, I feel like, was too rushed. The first season of Discovery was really, really, really bad. <laughs> season two and three are better, but the first season, man, it, it, it just drags the whole thing down so much. <laughs> but it seems like things are finally looking up. The new Star Trek Strange New Worlds show looks like it's going to revive episodic Problem of the Week Star Trek, which I'm all for. That, that That's the... Bee's knees, man. And this show, Star Trek Prodigy, which seems like it's going to be a somewhat episodic, somewhat serialized animated adventure show. Seems pretty freaking promising so far. Uh, this is a Nickelodeon show. I don't know if it's actually airing on Nickelodeon, but it is being posted weekly to, what is it called, Paramount Plus now or, or something? Or is that what it was called before and it's called something else now? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, though. Go go Google it. Google will know. And the premise of this one is super interesting. It doesn't focus on a Starfleet crew this time. It's a crew of all alien characters, seemingly from all over the Milky Way galaxy as it exists in Star Trek, but primarily from, I'm, I'm assuming, the Delta Quadrant, where Star Trek Voyager was primarily set. Though, not much is made clear by this first episode. This is very much just a dip-your-toes-into-the-story kind of first episode. And right out the gate, <laughs> I don't know any of these characters' names yet. They're all aliens. They have weird alien names. With the exception of one character, I know none of their names. I'm just going to refer to them by, like, their descriptors. So, so keep that in mind. I'm, I'm going to put some visuals in here, too, assuming that YouTube lets me, but j just keep that in mind. It seems like the two major players in this are going to be this upbeat kid who, like, the whole thing starts out in a, for lack of more eloquent terms, a slave labor camp. And, and no one's ever escaped from this place, and it's overseen by this dark, shadowy figure who seems almost omnipotent. Like, his control was just indisputable and complete and yet this kid still thinks he can escape like this is a place where no one understands anyone like telepaths can contact people with telepathy and like the villains have translators i guess to talk to the prisoners but one of the core concepts the core conceits of star trek is that most everyone everywhere has some equivalent to the universal translator, which can almost instantaneously learn a new language and then translate it in real time so perfectly that it just seems like the person around you is speaking your language. And this series opens on a place where in order to keep their slave workforce under control, under boot, they have stripped them of that technology. These people can't organize because they can't understand each other. And yet, we have this optimistic guy who genuinely believes that he can make it out of here. That none of these setbacks are enough. The other major player is, or at least seemingly is going to be, the daughter of the head of this place. Who, unlike her father, seems not a monster. Like, she seems very ingrained in the way things work here. She doesn't really see much potential to make things better for people. Life is hard. You just have to accept it. And her situation is better than most. Why would she jeopardize that? She's that kind of character. But you can tell deep down she's not bad. And these two are definitely going to have a relationship at some point. There's definitely going to be a romance. You can already tell. We've got some other interesting characters here. There's this giant rock monster who's actually... A small child, which is really adorable. There's like a goo dog that, that's really stinking cute. A Medusan, an energy being from the original series that 
if you ever witness their true form, you go mad. But he's got this cool robot containment unit, and he's also a telepath. So that telepathy thing comes into play with him. And um, I think they said he was a Tellerite. He didn't really look like a Tellerite, but a Tellerite engineer who seems like he could be interesting. He basically seems more like, okay, a friend of mine. He might watch this video if he does. Hi, Nick. Um, say hi in, in the comment section if you feel like it. Um, he kind of reminds me of my friend Nick's D&D character, a dwarf artificer, because he's got like an arm that transforms into different tools. I, I just thought that I thought that was really freaking cool. Just like a really freaking cool coincidence. And I'm not going to go into detail about how, but over the course of this episode, they all find their way onto the USS Protostar, I think is what it's called. A very small experimental Starfleet ship that from the promotional stuff seems like it's basically just like habitable areas strapped to an engine that can reconfigure itself into a few different kinds of experimental engines. So it seems like this show is going to go all over the place, and I'm really excited about that. The final character, the one whose name I actually know, uh, so far anyway, I, I think there's going to be more like regulars introduced. Um, but the, the final main character, whose name I actually know, is Janeway from Voyager. Not literally, but a hologram of her, a hologram based on her visual parameters and personality, kind of like how the emergency medical hologram was based on Louis Zimmerman, the guy who created it in-universe. And they actually brought Kate Mulgrew in to voice her. And this is super exciting for me, because I really love Voyager. It's a very uneven show. It has a lot of weaknesses to it, but I really love Voyager. And even though they definitely made some pretty serious mistakes in characterizing Janeway, when she's written well, she's a really great character. And here we have a version of Janeway who is a training hologram meant to train the crew that operates this ship. And now she's got this crew of, like, mostly young characters who aren't even Starfleet, who are going to need her to learn about not just the ship, but about Starfleet ideals. And it seems like this is going to be a show about how the ideals of classic Star Trek can bring these people together and help them make things better, not just for themselves, but the other people in the region from which they come. And it's symbolized by the fact that once they're on this ship, the Starfleet Universal Translator allows them to talk to each other for the first time. Like, there's not much more to say about it. The villains are fine. I found them kind of cliche in ways that Star Trek characters usually aren't cliche. They felt more like Star Wars villains than Star Trek villains. In fact, this entire show feels like it's trying to kind of ape the feel of, like, Clone Wars or something. But that's not bad, per se. It's just unexpected. But, like, the main cast, they seem super interesting. And the ship is super interesting. And, like, I'm just... I'm really looking forward to, like, some classic Star Trek where the whole point is these ideals make for a better world. I think we need something like that right now. So, well, I don't have much more to say about the show, except that you should watch it. Uh, maybe wait until it's a few episodes in, because it seems like these are going to flow into each other pretty heavily, and not much has happened yet. Like, watch this show, though, and, like, tell people about it. Like, even if you just like good, visually breathtaking, this show's breathtakingly gorgeous, cartoons or science fiction, give this one a try. I think you'll find something interesting in it, at least. But if you're a Star Trek fan, absolutely watch this show. Like, I don't know that it's going to turn out to be good, but I just, I've got such a good feeling from this one. This made me feel so good. Guys, <laughs> like, I don't know when this is set in the timeline of Star Trek, or where it's set exactly, and it's probably going to play a little fast and loose with some of the continuity. But, like, I don't even really care. It's just, it just seems like it's going to be a fun show. You know, I'm trying to think, am I missing any characters? I feel like I'm missing a character. No, I don't, th I don't think so. No, I'm not. My brain is just being weird. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm going to call it here. Watch this show. I'm going to call it here, though. This has been my two cents, very, very briefly, on Star Trek Prodigy. If you, like me, have already 
taking the time to check this show out. What do you think of it so far? I'd really like to talk to some people about this show a little bit, as you can probably tell. So let's get a discussion about that going in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video, share it with anyone else you think would enjoy my content, subscribe. If you haven't, you can also check out links to my various social medias, as well as the many ways you can help out the channel. Those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later. Also, I'm recording this on Halloween. It's the only thing I'm recording today, so say goodbye to the Halloween set. Bye. Bye, Halloween set. Okay. There we go. That's more like it.